46 seconds. Shamrock was astride the back of dynamite. 46 seconds? And to my way of thinking, that's 45 seconds longer than any man's ever done it before. And if that wasn't enough, at 50 yards, going in a dead gallop, he emptied a six-gun in a sack of meal no bigger than a half-grown pumpkin. From all I hear, this shamrock made the rest of you look like schoolboys. He's nothing but a grandstander. He wouldn't be worth his beans riding the reins. That trigger finger of his gets buck fever. And if there's any real shooting going on, he's headed the other way. You wouldn't be saying that just because you wound up a poor second now, would you, Tex? Lady, I'd say that if I was dead last. Shamrock ain't worth the powder take to blow him up. What do you say, Shamrock? Shall we? Let it go. See what I tell you. Skip it. Let's have a drink. I don't want a drink. Why don't somebody ask Shamrock why he's wearing notches on the handle of his gun when he never even killed a rattlesnake? Go ahead. Draw. Why don't you? I ain't nowhere close to my gun. Still running second best, huh, Tex? Shorty, though. Yeah. Well, this makes our take just that much larger. There's your share, Tex. Now that I've got this, I feel a blowout coming on. I'll see you boys in a couple of weeks. Not so fast, Tex. We've got a little extracting to do. Extracting? What are you talking about? The Larrabee stage is running a large shipment of gold through to Lawless. That meaning the gold is what we're going to extract. I see what you mean. A match? We're coming off a long way for a match. Well, you never know when you want to start a fire. Which way are you headed? That's up to the horse. Where do you think you're going? Well, I guess my horse has got the same idea as yours. They don't know where they're going, but we'll race you there. <laughs> Oh, 
like trying to remember a man's name and not being able to. I've got it right on the tip of my mind, but I can't seem to focus on it. it seems as though if I could ever remember, I might be able to straighten myself out. You can't remember anything that happened to you before the Navajos picked you up when you were a kid, is that right? That's right. The Navajos raised me until I was old enough to light out for myself. And then later on, I found out that this gun belonged to my dad and that he was the famous marshal. What you can't figure out is what you were doing crossing the desert at the age of six with your dad's gun. Yeah. All I know is that mom and dad and their one son, which must have been me, left Fort Bridger one Sunday morning and were never heard of again. And that's all. But someday I'll remember what happened between the time the family left and the engines picked me up. the coast to hide out. It'll save us the trouble of carrying the gold ourselves.
What's the idea of running out on us? They got fat, didn't they? We couldn't have done any good no way. Besides, there may be more of them coming. This driver's pretty badly hurt. Well, boys, don't stand there. Get him inside. What's the matter? Didn't you ever see a girl before? Uh, y y yes, ma'am. Many, many times. In the shoulder, huh? Yeah. Take it easy, bud. Oh, right down here on me. That's it. Down we go. Got him? Yeah, I got him. Take it easy. You'd better get inside and give her a hand. No, no. Uh, Lucky, I'd, I'd better drive. I, I've got to go pick up my horse. come along, we'd have all been killed. Well, it wasn't only me. My pal's the one that jumped on the coach. Hey! Hey! Is your friend always that shy? <laughs> Mostly, around good-looking women. Oh, I see. What did you say your names were? We didn't. My name's Lucky Hayden. My pal's named Shamrock Ellison. The famous bronc rider and pistol shot. Well, now, if your friend is all you say he is, they'll probably want to make him marshal just as soon as we get to Lawless. Yeah. What makes you think so? Because I'll see to it myself. Oh. Hey. shot. Better get a doctor quick. Anne, my darling, are you all right? Oh, yes, Father, perfectly. If it hadn't been for these two gentlemen here, I don't know what would have happened, especially Mr. Ellison. He made the most marvelous leap to the top of the coach. Well, that's fine, fine. Now, I think you better go home, my dear. I'll be along shortly. I have a little business to attend to. All right, Father. Good day, gentlemen. And uh, remember what I said about the marshal's job. What is this about the marshal's job? Nothing. She just happened to say this town needed a new marshal. Oh. I think I know what my daughter means. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Well, I'll see you later, gentlemen. Hello, Hi, Colonel. Doc. I can see you've got another souvenir, Clark. Not that one lad is fighting this cuss I ever did see. You should have seen how he popped that band. Tail over ten pot, right off the top of that coach. Hey, Deacon. You better send some of the boys back and pick up that body. I'll take care of it, Clark. 
The fact of the matter is, my dear, that things have been going from bad to worse since you've been gone. That's just what I've been trying to tell you, Daddy. This town needs two men like Mr. Ellison and his friend. Well, maybe you're right. I think I'll take a walk uptown. Oh, what for, Daddy? Well, you said we need a new marshal, didn't you? Oh, yes, but... Now I know what you're thinking. But I promise you I won't touch a drop. Cross my heart. I've been a good boy since you've been gone. You can ask anybody in town. All right, Daddy. But be careful. I'll be back just as soon as we get a new marshal and a deputy. Good night, honey. Why, you must have heard of him. What'd you say his name is? Shamrock Ellison. Why, he's the fightingest hombre in all Arizona. Have you heard of Billy the Kid? Or who hasn't? Well, let me tell you something. The reason Billy the Kid moved into Texas was because he heard that Shamrock Ellison had moved into Arizona. God, he must be a regular holy terror. Yeah, and that's not all. Black Bart surrendered the minute he heard that Shamrock Ellison moved into California. Set him up. Deacon, have you found anybody capable of taking that job as marshal? From what I've been hearing tonight, I think we've got our man. Yeah, and who would that be? Follow me. If you'll pardon the intrusion, sir, but uh, could you tell us where we can find your friend, Shamrock Ellison? Why, of course. Right over at the hotel. Thank you, sir. Say, Colonel, you're a very persuasive man. How about going over there and paying your respects? It'd be a pleasure. Say, uh, what's this all about? Well, we're about to make your friend the Marshal of Lawless. No. Yeah. Set him up with you. Uh, I'll have a little bird. Come in. Well, Colonel, I wasn't expecting you. Have a seat. May I take your hat? Thank you. How's Miss Ann? Very well, thank you. I don't exactly know how to put this. I suppose you'd call me a one-man welcoming committee. The deacon sent me over to ask you if you'd accept the honorable position of marshal for the town of Lawless. I, uh, I appreciate the honor, but I'm afraid I'll have to turn it down. Well, your partner was telling us of your exploits. The fact of the matter is, he said you expected to stay in Lawless. And we'd be mighty proud to have you. It's nice of you to feel that way, Colonel, but I'm afraid that my partner has our plans a little mixed up. We're heading for Utah in the morning. Oh, well, I'm very sorry to hear that. I wish to thank you for saving my daughter's life and the express box. Glad to have been of service. Well, I'll be seeing you, Mr. Ellison. Where did you get this gun? It belonged to my father. Why? Would his name happen to be Sam Ellison, the notorious frontier marshal? That's right. Did you know him? I hope you enjoy your trip to Utah. That's a very good place for you to be going, Mr. Ellison. with the greatest of pleasure that on behalf of my good friend and fellow citizen, Shamrock Ellison, that I accept this great honor that you paid him. Yeah. And furthermore, as he ran Jesse James out of Kansas, Shamrock will run every outlaw out of the state of Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. I propose... Just a minute, Lucky. What are you trying to tell these Congratulations, people? Marshal. Congratulations. Come on, boys. Let's give the new Marshal of Lawless three cheers. Hooray! 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 Wait a minute, wait a minute. There must be some mistake. No mistake at all, my boy. In this room, you see many of the citizens of the fair city of Lawless. By unanimous vote, we have decided that the United States government shall appoint you our new marshal. Now, this year badge belonged to Dave DeLong, who just the other day met an untimely demise down by Crooked River riding shotgun guard on the express stage. It'll give you the authority you need until the government can issue a new one. Oh, now look at here, fellas. I'm not qualified to be marshal. The man that scared Billy the Kid ain't qualified. What about the time you ran all them rustlers out of Oklahoma? Yeah, what about... Now, listen to me, listen to me, please. 
That long-legged horned toad that calls himself my pal is the biggest liar in six states. I never killed anybody in my life. Well, that ain't what the stage driver told us this afternoon. Modesty, my boy, is becoming to all great men, but it's uncalled for at the present time. Well, you fellas will have to give me a chance to think it over. I'll let you know first thing in the morning. That's fair enough. Well, Dad, that didn't take long. What's the matter? Wouldn't he take the job? He better not. Well, what's wrong? He's the son of the man that killed my brother. You mean murdered him? Well, that's what it amounted to. He took advantage that he was an officer of the law. Now, Bob was a reckless boy when he was in his cups. Might have done a little wild shooting in the center of town, but he never hit anybody. But, Daddy, I'm sure Shamrock... That's enough, Ann. Let me shake your hand, Marshal. I'm mighty proud to know you. My pal, why I... Uh... That's right, I did it for your own good. Why, this is the best thing could happen to you. It would have been a lot easier if you stood me up in that corner and pugged me yourself. You're not in this all alone. Whether you know it or not, I'm gonna be your new dad. It's for you, Marshal. Sounds familiar. Seems as though I should know that name. I've got a hunch this is going to be all over town by morning. Looks like you're stuck, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm stuck. When the judge asked him how old he was, he said 29, Judge. And the judge says you'll just be 41 when you get out. <laughs> Deacon? Uh, good morning, Shamrock. If you still feel the same way about things, you've got yourself a new marshal. That's my boy. That's more like it. Yes, sir. Now, I'll take the job on one condition. What's that? That you make Lucky Hayden deputy marshal. Anything you say, marshal. Line up at the bar, boys. The drinks are on the house. Our new marshal. Come on, marshal. <laughs> Set him up, bartender. Well, I reckon the cat and his gang are going to have their hands full from now on. I understand our new marshal here is the best shot this side of the Mississippi. Say, who is this cat? What does he look like? Your guess is as good as ours, Marshal. Nobody's ever seen him. As soon as we think we got one cat taken care of, then another steps in and takes his place. All we know is he's a cruel, ruthless killer. I guess we'd like to run into him, wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> What's so funny? My ears to see me, or did I hear you say this to the new marshal? That's right. Pour yourself a drink. Looks like we come into a nice, safe little town, doesn't it? We'd better move on before this marshal scares me to death. Stranger, that sounded downright insulting. That's right, mister. That's the way it was meant. And that chicken-livered marshal ain't even got the nerve to open his mouth about it. Did you hear that? Who's the stranger? <laughs> I think that remark calls for an apology. Let's see you make me, Marshal. I suggest there'll be no gunplay. After all, these personal arguments only lead to bloodshed. He's right. You'd only be wasting good men. How about a stranger? Sure, I'm willing to put it on the shelf for the time being. Never got much kick out of shooting a jackrabbit snowhound. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, boys, what do you say we pick off where we left off? Sure, let's have a drink. I still say he's the darnest marshal I ever knew. I never saw the equal for the way he started to move in on those bad men. Make it one blue. I hear there's only a room on his dad's gun for one more notch, and he's saving that for somebody special. I know what you mean. And I think he's just being foolish. The shooting as gun toters in government service have tried to beat the cat. They're all underground today. I don't know. The cat hasn't done it yet. If I was a betting man, I'd go along with the marshal. Make it two blues. Maybe so. But to my mind, 
The cat ain't really started to claw yet. I reckon I can afford that one. I'm telling you, I can't go on like this. You doing all the work I'm supposed to do and me taking the bows for it. Oh, quit your worrying. You'll probably wind up by taking the cat yourself. Well, I guess it's too late to back out now. The sooner you realize that, the better it'll be for you. Are you sure this fellow they call the cat's going to show up? He'll be here. How many? Two. <laughs> Three. Tell me the new marshal's saving a notch on his gun for somebody special. They mean you, Cat. I thought you were supposed to be gunman. Looks like every week he adds one more of you babies to his nursery. I'm doing the best I can. That ain't good enough. I want that guy taken care of. That ought to be easy, mister. Who are you? I'm Tex. He brung me. What makes you think the marshal's gonna be so easy? Because I've known him from way back. If you ask me, it's that deputy here is making all the noise. Get rid of him and your troubles are over. You could have the job of getting them both. That suits me fine, but I come pretty high. You'll be satisfied. And now to the business of the evening, which is the next ore shipment. We've got that figured out. We're going in town tonight and feed the colonel some booze. When that old duffer starts talking, <laughs> well, you know, gentlemen, I believe that I've had just about enough for the evening. Calm now, old timer. Be sociable. Dick and I don't get into town very often. Well, that's true, too, and you are, you are mighty nice company. Let's go over there and sit down and be comfortable. Now, well, that's a good idea. Tell me, Ann, why is your father so unfriendly toward me? Is he? I, I hadn't noticed. He's forbidden me to come around here. Oh, he'll get over that. But it would help if you gave up your job as marshal. What's wrong with being marshal? To father's way of thinking, peace officers are nothing more than gunslingers hiding behind badges. Somebody has to do it. I wish it weren't you. I, I'd hate to see you turn into a killer, shooting men just because the law says it's right. Believe me, Ann. I'd quit if I could. And if you could, I... I suppose you'd be moving on. That depends. By the way, uh, have you seen Father this evening? He, uh, he's at the saloon. Drinking? I'm afraid so. I'm so worried about him. I wonder if I'll you... drop on by and see if I can get some of the boys to send him home. Good night, Anne. Good night. I don't think I know what I'm talking about, huh? <laughs> I can show you enough gold that it'd pop your eyes. Ah, you've been talking like that for years. You think I'm spoofing, huh? <laughs> well, it's coming into the express office from the El Conde mine tonight. <laughs> Look, you two ain't supposed to tell that to nobody, because I'm the only one that knows about it. What about the marshal? I don't tell him nothing. The marshal and me ain't even on speaking terms. You're getting behind on your drinking, old timer. Yeah. I thought you and the marshal were on good terms. Whatever give you that idea? Well, he's been sporting around with your daughter, hasn't he? I told him to stay away from Ann. Why, that's funny. I could have swore I saw him walking to your house as we rode in. How about it, Dick? It was the marshal, all right. There's no doubt about it. He can't do that to me. I'll fix him. I'll run him out of this town. Just a minute, old timer. Don't you want a gun? I don't need no gun. I got these, ain't I? I hear that marshal's kind of trigger happy. You better take this for self-protection. Hey, 
where you're going. Yeah, Colonel, let me have that gun. You're allowed to hurt somebody. Oh, uh, you let me alone. I'm going coyote hunting. But you're in no condition. Ah, oh, let him alone. He can't hurt nobody. All right, then, Ben. You go right straight home and go to bed. Get a good night's sleep. Ellis! Now, why don't you put that gun away before it accidentally goes off? It ain't gonna be no accident when it goes off. I'll teach you that you can't go sweet on my daughter and get away with it. Reach for your gun. Now you're letting a little whiskey do a lot of talking, Colonel. I'm going to give you the same thing that your father gave my brother. Now hold on, Colonel. I don't want any trouble. I said, reach for your gun, Ellison. Shoot the gun out of his hand. That was a dirty trick, shooting a helpless old man. I was aiming at his gun. I couldn't have missed. You're a poor shot, then. You got him right through the chest. Come on, let's put him on that table. And then, just as I got a beat on the colonel's gun, I ducked. That must have been when this other fellow took a shot at me, missed, and hit the colonel. What makes you think he was trying to hit you? There are plenty of fellows in this town who'd like to take a shot at me, thanks to you. On top of everything else, I have to be accused of shooting an old man. It's the express office. Now's your chance. We're going down there and show them what real shooting's like. I'm all right now. I remember about Mom and Dad. The cat ambushed us. He murdered both of them. I was scared, so I hid in the wagon. 
The cat never saw me. Lucky, are you hurt bad? No, I'm all right. Just ran out of ammunition, that's all. Gosh, you had to do something. They were shooting at me, so I fell down. Why, you... Go get them, Shamrock. Get mounted, men. I'm forming a posse. Right. to go along up to the hideout. The rest of you ride off toward Painted Rocks. Draw off the posse. the other fort to draw off the posse. We brought the gold. Nice work, boys. Nice work. That's right. And hard work, too. I won't double my share. So our friend from Texas is getting big ideas. Tough guy, eh? You better watch yourself. You won't get anything. For you. But personally, I like it here, and I'm staying. All right, step over there.
coming up fast. We'll make a stand here behind these rocks. Suppose you remember me after 20 years. Don't look so scared, Deacon. I'm going to give you a better break than you gave my mom and dad. At least you'll get a trial. Dick and the Texan took it to the hideout. Where's the hideout? Red Fire Canyon. Marshal, and I do mean Marshal. Looks like you didn't need any help after all. You know, you can't fool old Lucky. I knew that he was the cat all the time. <laughs> Meow for the man, Deacon. You mean him? He's the cat? Well, that's what I said, all <laughs> the first time I've ever been wrong. <laughs> You got the straight of it from the cat about the killing of my brother. I guess I had you all wrong, Shamrock. Forget it, Colonel. I'm sorry you boys are going to Utah. I've always wanted to see what the state of Utah looked like. You know, the way that you clean up the cat and his gang wouldn't surprise me if they ran you for governor. <laughs> <laughs> governor? Did you say governor? Yes. yes. Well, then Shamrock Ellison's your man. Well, I'll never forget the time Sam Houston called on Shamrock to help win the Battle of the Alamo. Yes, and the time he outshot Buffalo Bill during a buffalo hunt. There they were, hey, completely no, 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 surrounded. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Lucky. That was just the little stuff. Tell him about the time I helped out George Washington. George, what? Sure, there they were at Valley Forge. George Washington said to Shamrock Ellison, he said, Shammy, old boy, we can't win this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Thank you. 